Probably the most frustrating uh, situations I've seen related to barring participation in the democratic process related um, to youth activism and youth participation in, in the youth space would be related to situations where politics with a big P comes into play. Um, I think some of the most frustrating scenarios I've witnessed and been a part of is when you have a big conference being organized and young people from all over the Mediterranean basin are being invited um, to talk about different ideas and, and work together on a specific project. And then specific participants are barred in airports because of their passport or their point of origin. It's in moments like this when you're bringing together a multitude of different people from all over the world where you realize there are some individuals that do indeed have access to far more opportunities and, and in a way far more rights than other people. And this, these opportunities are literally given to you sometimes based on your point of origin, based on the strength of your passport. And I've seen this happen time and time again in conferences where young people who deserve to be at the conference, deserve to be at the decision-making table through meritocracy and through their work and through the brilliance of their ideas are stopped at airports and barred from attending because of their nationality, because of their passport, because of their point of origin and nothing else. And I think this translates very well to multi-society as well. It's something that is there even though we don't always speak about it. Malta to an individual who is not Maltese is a completely different Malta. And sometimes, according to the strength of your passport, or if you're lucky enough to have a passport, if you're lucky enough to have uh, an identity card or any form of identification papers, the situation in Malta can be very, very, very different. Everything from the courts to the legal system to public services to the society itself can be turned on its head in a completely different reality to someone um, who's coming from a different point of origin. And I think that is potentially one of the most eye-opening things I've had in, in new activism when I realized that simply my passport allows me to have far more opportunities than I would expect. But moreover, I think in, in multi-society, we need to recognize that some people who do not have a Maltese nationality are experiencing a very, very different Malta uh, than those who do have a nationality, a passport, or do have papers to keep them uh, safe or allow them to have access uh, to all these opportunities, all these rights and all the services we take for granted. One of the most important things about youth activism is making sure that the space is going to contribute towards the daily life of the individuals being active within the space. You become a youth activist, you form part of a youth organization because you believe in the mission statement, you believe in the why of that said organization and you volunteer, you actively work towards trying to make a difference in that space because you believe in that said difference. Not having uh, specific people from different backgrounds being involved within youth organizations can mean two things. Either there's lack of accessibility and lack of, of space for these people to participate or potentially the goals and the work of that said organization are not in line with the needs of that social group. I think these are the two most important things uh, youth organizations need to take into account when trying to assess how they can open the doors uh, for more participation and more accessibility for different groups of people within their space.